American Electric Power, one of the largest U.S. utilities, is starting trials this week of a full-scale carbon capture and storage unit at one of its West Virginia plants that could be a model for the rest of the industry. With half of U.S. electricity coming from coal, cutting emissions from generating plants is vital if the U.S. is to cap carbon. So development of technologies to capture and store coal plants' emissions would not only help the environment, it could give coal-fired power plants a new lease on life in an era of cap and trade. Clean Skies' Dan Goldstein was one of the first reporters to get a first-hand look at AEP's new project. If carbon capture and storage, or CCS, ever becomes commercially viable, this giant power plant in West Virginia might be the reason why. Our process starts at the outlet of the flue gas desulfurization system, which is a large stainless steel vessel. Um, coming out of the hood, you see two white uh, ductwork leading to and from our capture facility. Brian Sherrick runs American Electric Power's CCS test plant here along the Ohio River, where AEP is gearing up the first ever large-scale carbon removal and storage. This test rig, developed jointly with Alstom of France, is attached to a 1,300-megawatt coal-fired power plant built back in 1981. This plant uses more than 7,000 tons of coal a day and emits 8.2 million tons of CO2 each year. But if CCS works, plants like this one could see CO2 emissions drop by up to 90 percent. We're sort of pushing the envelope and doing a 10 times scale up. So um, we're trying to push the commercialization of the technology as fast as we can with the goal of decreasing the energy demand as much as possible so that we don't have to replace that energy loss with other um, industry or other uh, ways of producing the power, whether it be newer, more efficient coal plants or nuclear or gas. This plant behind me removes about 100,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere a year. The next step is a plant six times as big, moving 1.5 million tons out of the atmosphere a year. The trick is doing it without needing a separate power plant itself. Any of the CO2 capture processes require electricity and steam to work in the process. So one of the goals of this process and one of the reasons we chose Alston's chilled ammonia process is it offers the opportunity to get the lowest energy demand to run the process. Uh, commercially available CO2 capture processes are somewhere around 30 percent of the energy demand of what they're treating. Uh, the goal of the chilled ammonia process is to get down to 10 to 15 percent. And once the CO2 is captured, it has to be stored. AEP is securing the CO2 in these wells here, drilled a mile and a half deep into saline aquifers. Deep enough not to be a threat to the water table and the surrounding community, the company says. This area is 85 feet or above. The coal seams in this area are 200 to 400 feet. Uh, so we're injecting a mile and a half underground. So there's several thousand feet of good cap rock between our injection reservoirs and the freshwater drinking zones or the coal seams. Now AEP plans to have this plant online by 2015 and it could finally be the start of those green jobs that many politicians have been promising. Not only will CCS provide construction jobs building the new infrastructure, but utilities will have to build essentially a new power plant within a plant. And that means people working around the clock to run them. If CCS were to go on commercial scale, we would have to build a control room like this, very similar. Uh, we would probably have to add probably three to six more people to run that control room in that process. But AEP says it can't do it alone without the help of Uncle Sam. That's why this month the company asked for $334 million from the Department of Energy to help it develop the largest scale version of this plant. But without the funds, AEP says it might have to pare back its plans to commercialize the technology. That could leave future large scale plans of CCS by other utilities up in the air. Dan Goldstein, Clean Skies News.